Hello and welcome to another Tabletop Games Blog Saturday Review. The age of inception is all but over. People are starting to forget the stories that were passed down. Tabuld's tale, a sign of things to come, will soon return. While our memories fade, that most ancient of omens is ready to lighten the night sky once again. It is time for a few of us whose memories are more vivid to get ready for a new age. When Tabul's tale returns and reigns supreme in Rahod, Age of Prophecy by Jeffrey Irving from Weathervane Gates. Created by Jeff Irving in 1990 and inspired by epic fantasy novels and tabletop games, Rahod, Age of Prophecy is a tabletop role-playing game without anyone having to take on the role of storyteller. Players can focus on working together to get through the encounters as well as possible while the game takes over the rest. Not only that, Rahod is actually a game system where Age of Prophecy represents the core box, which by itself is already full of immense potential. It promises over 50 hours of play in a story-driven campaign, dozens of individual quests and solo mini-campaigns in which you brave adventurers, will explore the gigantic world of Rahod. To top it all off, three expansions are already planned as well. The Enlightened and the Enslaved, Facing the Storm, and The False God's Deceit. The world of Rahod promises to be, and I quote, A unique world filled with creatures, races and lands, unlike anything seen before, free from tired and overused fantasy tropes. So while being set in a fantasy world, this game tries to create something new and different, rather than relying on well-known and trampled-to-death cliches. I was given a partial review copy, so I expect the final game to include a lot more than I have seen. Even so, the version I have is already massive. The box is huge and contains six minis that have a dark wash on them to bring out their detail, dozens of cardboard standees, various tokens, clear plastic gems, some dice and a plastic console for every player with a cardboard overlay where players track various stats. There are also a number of double-sided cardboard single-filled maps with a glossy finish which represent the encounters in your campaign. They have a brief introduction and describe the setup and goals of the scenario. On the table, Rahod Age of Prophecy looks absolutely amazing. The player consoles loom large and are reminiscent of character dashboards that you might find in online games. They also hold your spell and other cards as well as the plastic jams that you need to cast your spells. The illustrations of the map fit the setting and are very clear. When you place the hero menace and enemy standees on them, everything really comes to life. I've been given the list of all the artists I've worked on the game and it is huge. It is clear a lot of work has gone into the artwork with 3D sculpts, the design of the player consoles, the components and everything else. It definitely looks epic. Not only that, two fantasy writers, Sean A. Dressler and Alex Fox, are responsible for the stories and scenario descriptions and other creative writing. It is clear that no expense has been spared. When I first saw Rahod Age of Prophecy at UK Games Expo this year, I was really excited. I was already imagining playing this game and having a role-playing experience without everyone having to write their characters' backstories, but on one of us would come up with a campaign story arc, locations, enemies and whatnot. Here was a game that you could take out of the box, set up and play with very little preparation. Hearing that two professional authors helped with the story and creative writing also got me excited. I imagined a lot of deep lore and imaginative settings and storylines that would see our characters evolve and grow with each encounter. I saw I saw us all bragging about how we defeated our enemies and how we would end the massive campaign, feeling like we had lived a lifetime. 
Yet I was also a bit reticent because I'd seen many crowdfunding campaigns in the past that had lots of minis, amazing artwork and promised a lot, but in the end were hugely lacking in gameplay. While that is what certainly attracts people who just want to move minis around the table and aren't too concerned about storytelling, Rahod Age of Prophecy promises the whole package. So you can imagine my excitement mixed with nervousness when, after reading the relatively short rulebook, I set up the game for the first time to play with friends. Everyone shows her favorite character, diligently set up their player console, place the rather fiddly tracker tokens in the corresponding positions to record our stats, found their relevant equipment and spell cards and slotted them in, filled one of the compartments in the console with energy crystals, and then proceeded to admire their miniature while I explained the rules. So we set up our first encounter and tried out different things, to explore how the game works. We moved, we attacked and we defended, we tried out our spells and innate character abilities. Everyone cheered when we killed one of the beasts. We tried different strategies to see how best to take advantage of everyone's strengths. We changed positions and initiative order. Eventually, we had it down to a good sequence of moves, attacks and defense. Once we knew the best strategy, we stuck with it. Unfortunately, that created a rather repetitive pattern. Everyone just kept doing the same thing until the enemies were defeated. Nobody felt that they made any particularly interesting decisions. If Rahod H Prophecy was a computer game, it would have been a matter of pre-programming your action combo and executing it on repeat. I appreciate that the first scenario of any game is intentionally kept more simplistic, to allow everyone to get used to the rules and try different things. However, the first scenario of the game comes in two parts, where the second is basically a repeat of the first. That didn't fill us with a lot of motivation. Yet we plodded on, because we wanted to see what happened at the end. After all, surely there would be an amazing reward for our efforts. Maybe we would get upgraded weapons. Increasing our stats would also have felt good. Unfortunately, all we gained at the end were some basic extra items. It was nothing amazing. As you can imagine, we were all rather disappointed. Maybe we just didn't deserve huge rewards for this first simple mission. Licking their wounds, both mental and physical, our characters decide to rest before the next encounter. The rest mechanism in Rahod Age of Prophecy is one of the things I was particularly interested in seeing. The game comes with a rest deck. You shuffle it and draw the top card, which either tells you to heal a point or two, or it's an ambush. To help you protect yourself from an ambush, one of the group can stay awake and be the watch or the others can gain some strength back. That little bit of randomness sounded really interesting. You could never be sure what you might get in return. It was possible that you would all sleep deeply and recover little, or, or you might get this nasty surprise. The problem is, you only ever gain one or two health back. So when your characters have lost ten or so, you will have to rest at least five times, probably more. You have to draw five or more cards and each time hope it's not an ambush. While drawing cards doesn't sound too bad, the problem is when you get ambushed. Irrespective of whether you have set a watch or not, you have to start another encounter. You basically have to defeat the same enemies again. The only difference is when you have set a watch, you can place the enemies where you want. However, you're going through another whole battle again, probably losing a lot of health again. More importantly though, the encounter will take a while to play through, after which you will have to rest some more. On top of the repetitive combat and endless resting, there isn't a lot of change from scenario to scenario. While enemies become harder and have new abilities, which require different strategies, the rewards don't get much better. Once you've worked out the best way to deal with a specific enemy, it'll be a matter of attack, heal, repeat. 
characters don't seem to evolve much, or maybe not as quickly as I had hoped. Yes, stats will improve and new equipment and spells will be added, but at the core of it, everything feels very much the same. Each different enemy is a different standee with a different enemy card, but they don't actually feel different. Unfortunately, the writing is also a bit disappointing. I know it is hard to create a deep story in a small space that fits into the corner of a map, so I can forgive that each encounter's introduction is brief. However, the overall story is the usual fare of a band of adventurers exploring the lands to discover the truth behind rumours and fighting and picking up loot along the way. I can see that for some people, the Rahod Age of Prophecy is going to be a great way of spending a few fun-foot hours rolling dice, triggering spells and playing with minis. For me though, it just doesn't work. I don't feel like I need to find out where the story goes or how our characters will grow and change. I don't need to explore all the different enemies and lands that await. As much as I'd hoped for this game to allow me to while away the hours during dark autumn evenings, it just isn't it. Thank you for listening to this Tabletop Games Blog Saturday Review Podcast. Please check the description below for links mentioned in this episode as well as to the written version of this article on the blog. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us some stars or leave a review. Please also tell your friends about me and if you want to offer financial support, check out my Patreon ko pages, links to which you'll find in the blog at tabletopgamesblog.com. So thank you again for listening and I hope to see you again soon. This podcast was made possible by the generous help of my supporters. Royal Patron, Sean Newman. Magic Champion, John Risley. Castle Guards, David Miller and James Naylor. Dice Masters, Alex Bardi, Paul Grogan and Robin Kay. And Shining Lights, Jacob Davis, Gavin Jones, Sarah Reed and Richard Simpson.